Hello, it's Helder here, and today I want to talk to you about these Gotenna mesh units that I picked up. And basically what they allow me to do is whether I'm on vacation, especially internationally where I might not have mobile service, or if I'm out in a location, let's say in a field, where I cannot get a signal with my cell phone, or of course for emergency preparedness when the grid does go down, what I'm able to do is send my GPS location as well as SMS texts utilizing a phone on my app without needing a cell tower, routers, Wi-Fi, or anything else of that nature. So let's get into a little bit more detail on the specs of these Gotenna mesh units. What initially attracted me to these uh, Gotenna units uh, basically is the fact that I am a ham radio operator. My uh, call is Whiskey 2 November Tango Charlie. And within my Warrior Zero project, I have a bunch of members that are focused on the outdoors and emergency preparedness. So I'm constantly trying to mo motivate them to get their ticket or their ham radio license so that we could actually communicate during an emergency and of course develop the skills beforehand so that we could uh, be able to connect uh, no matter what the scenario is. Well, unfortunately, one in every hundred gets motivated enough to actually get their ham radio license. So as far as communicating their, uh, via that means, is relatively difficult, especially with my members, since they don't have a license. So when I saw these Gotenna mesh units, I figured, you know what, they all have a cell phone. All they would really need to do is pick this up. It won't give me, let's say, the range that I would get on uh, utilizing my ham radio, but it's something as opposed to nothing to be able to get us to communicate. So I picked up a few units, and uh, let me share some more information on uh, my findings. So my layperson explanation on how this would work is these units will speak to each other. So you have them paired, let's say, with your cell phone with an app. And as long as these two units can see each other, uh, figuratively speaking, frequency-wise, they'll be able to communicate. And let's say you could get up to three miles in an ideal world, uh, being in the city, so on and so forth. Uh, pretty much a mile is uh, your max that you're going to get. Of course, the higher that you would be and the less obstruction. So if this was some kind of obstru obstruction, a uh, mountain, so on and so forth, and we're both in a camping situation, and my wife is here, and let's say I'm here, and we have this big thing in the middle, we're probably not going to be able to communicate too far. But if we were higher above there, we'll probably get a hell of a lot better uh, range as far as being able to communicate and for these two units to actually see each other. Utilizing my same little uh, demonstration here, schematic from before, let's say this was uh, the high point of where we're trying to communicate and we're kind of blocked here. If we were to add a third device and uh, Gotenna calls it a relay in the ham radio world, we would call it somewhat of a repeater. And we had this really hanging up there high on a tree or on top of a mountain on some kind of tripod, so on and so forth. And now this was high up here. This unit can go up here and communicate as long as there's good line of sight. And now this unit here would be able to pick that up. So there's always uh, some options. And that's what's very cool about this mesh network. The more people that have this, uh, let's say even in a, um, in a city environment, they all act as little repeaters. So just uh, something that people are always worried about security and things of that nature. These are uh, fully secure and encrypted. So if you do want to send information, so on and so forth, and want to be the only people really gaining that information, it's a pretty cool little option, especially if it gets more populated with uh, other people jumping on a bad wagon, having these units, having extra ones that they're using in their own home as repeaters. So if I happen to come by and I'm in the area, I can pick up that signal to extend my range, uh, so on and so forth. Once again, I don't want to get too technical with this. Uh, there's other reviews out there if you're looking for the technical information that could explain it much better than, uh, than I do. But at the same time, just keep in mind that uh, I will put a lot more information in my blog post, so be sure to uh, check that out. So as I mentioned earlier, they take uh, very little energy as far as power consumption. But at the same time, they are meant to last 24 hours, so I always kind of bring that down to, let's say, 16 hours uh, once the battery gets some wear and tear on it. So you definitely want to have some kind of other backup powering this, especially if you are using it as that repeater or relay at base camp or even in your home. And what's cool about this is you could use uh, relatively inexpensive solar panels that have little controllers on them as well as a little battery backup to be able to hook this up to and it could power you through the weekend or of course longer especially if you have it hooked up to your regular electricity uh, in the home but for emergency preparedness of course you always want to try to have that solar backup and now there seems to be units all over the place and instead of breaking the bank for these uh, little solar power units you can get something relatively inexpensive that'll be able to power this uh, with no issues at all so bottom line if you are uh, in the market 
for communication devices that would work well uh, in a international setting. Let's say if you don't want to go out there and purchase these expensive SIM cards and you're bouncing around, let's say from country to country, and you just want to stay in touch with your little group or your loved one, pretty good uh, at filling that niche. Of course, for being out in a field, uh, camping scenario where the cell coverage just isn't great, you're able to set up basically what I spoke of before, especially if you are setting one up as a relay or a repeater. And of course, in an off-grid situation when everything else is down. So definitely take a close look at these. Uh, so far, they are definitely piquing my curiosity. There are people out there that are soldering on different connectors so they could use other antennas, other people building le little uh, weather uh, weatherproof uh, boxes so they could leave them on their roof hooked up to the antenna and just something that's providing a service. And if we all kind of hop on that bandwagon and this really takes off, it's going to be a very viable communication uh, network without really having to be plugged into anybody else's. So anything that gives me that type of freedom uh, is something that I want to look a little bit closer, especially with privacy issues and things of that nature. But more importantly, if I do need to communicate when all else is down, pretty good option so far, especially if it continues to grow. This is Helder. I hope that you found my review helpful.